The Lost World by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle is a science fiction adventure novel published in 1912. It tells the tale of an expedition to South America to an unexplored and mysterious plateau full of prehistoric creatures, strange beings, and evolutionary anomalies. It is written from the perspective of Edward Malone, a journalist who is tasked with documenting the journey. The tale is seen by the reader through Malone's letters sent back to England. I found this to be a compelling narrative device. The three other main characters really grew on me throughout the novel. There is the chief scientist, George Challenger, a grisly and rough fellow. Despite his disreputable nature, he is a scrupulous academic, stopping at nothing in his quest for knowledge about the biological world. His way of relating to people may be contemptible, but his way of speaking is formal, intelligent, and always compelling. He is a brave man who wants nothing more than to live a life of knowledge in servitude to science. And, of course, his ego. His antithesis is Professor Summerlee. Despite sharing an indefatigable passion for science, the two men start the book with an antagonistic relationship. This is because Challenger had been to South America before, to the base of the plateau. He hadn't been able to climb it, so he didn't have direct evidence of the wonders which would be found. But he did have the notebook of a lost American explorer, Maple White. In this notebook, were illustrations of dinosaurs and other majesties. He had a few small pieces of physical evidence as well, and with this, returned to England, hoping to be admired for his revolutionary discovery. Instead, the scientific community mocked him. Summerlee typified this type of establishment skeptic. Nevertheless, the Zoological Association authorized a return trip to South America and Summerlee was tasked with verifying Challenger's unbelievable claims. Thus, the stage is set for our adventure. Challenger and Summerlee, two scientists, one thought of as a nut job, the other as a scrupulous skeptic on a journey documented by our narrator, Ned Malone. There's a fourth participant in this expedition, one Lord John Roxton, a noble man of courage and honor who has traveled the world seeking adventures and would not pass up an opportunity like this. He acts as the group's protector, and his cool confidence gives them comfort throughout the dangerous voyage. I won't get into the details of the trip because those are wonderfully fun and exciting to read with fresh eyes. What I will say is that the events which unfold had me hooked from the moment they entered the Amazon. This sort of book is innocent and well told. The relationships between the characters are believable and realistic. The descriptions of the plants and animals are vivid and awesome. And the course of events are logical and well paced. There was never a moment in this book I felt that the story had slowed down. I appreciate this sort of escapism filled with wonder and heroism. One emotional element which had me smiling and feeling was laid out from the very beginning of the book. It is that Ned Malone, the journalist, like any young man, is in love. This woman, Gladys, however, rebukes him. She basically puts him squarely in the friend zone. When he expresses his love for her, she actually gets mad at him and tells him that he ruined their beautiful friendship. When he inquires as to why she cannot love him, she tells him that her ideal man would be a harder, sterner man, not so ready to adapt himself to a silly girl's whim. But above all, he must be a man who could do, who could act, who could look death in the face and have no fear of him. A man of great deeds and strange experiences. It is never a man that I should love, but always the glories he had won, for they would be reflected upon me. Ned tries to explain to her that he is still a young man and simply hasn't had the opportunity for great quests and glorious deeds. But she shuts down his rationalizations, saying, But chances are all around you. It is the mark of the kind of man I mean that he makes his own chances. 
You can't hold him back. There are heroisms all around us waiting to be done. It's for men to do them and for women to reserve their love as a reward for such men. But you shouldn't do it merely to please me. You should do it because you can't help yourself, because it's natural to you, because the man in you is crying out for heroic expression. Secretly, this rude awakening that young Ned received from his love Gladys was the reason he wanted to go on this adventure. Behind the epic story that is told is the emotional maturation of a young man tutored by tragic rejection. He wanted to be a greater man because the world demanded it of him. I recommend The Lost World by Arthur Conan Doyle to anyone looking for a lighthearted adventure tale. These classic science fiction novels, some of the first of their genre, have a soft place in my heart. In these books, we can see early modern man's view of himself and nature and how scientists strove towards knowledge of the natural world, not only for instrumental means, but also out of passion and desire. This book has been adapted for film and a television series a few times, all of which I have not watched, so therefore cannot recommend. You can find the PDF for this book online as it is quite old and in the public domain. If you enjoyed watching this video, please like and subscribe. I post English lessons and sometimes book reviews.